I'm Christina from The Turned Leg. I love to salvage, repurpose, and create and help others to do the same. Sometimes you can't find the cool piece of salvage that you're looking for. And that's why I've become a JRV wood retailer. JRV stands for Jamie Ray Vintage. It is a family run business right in the United States and they make amazing wood products. I'm gonna show you how to transform some of those products and really make them special. They make excellent gifts or items for your own home decor. These are just a few of the products that I offer. To see a complete list, check out my website at shoptheturnedleg.com. JRV wood products are MDF and real wood. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to transform each one of these. Are you enjoying this video? If so, take a second to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also click the bell for notifications. It really helps me to continue to help others to salvage, repurpose, and create. First, I'm gonna take a set of corbels. These are the Jack corbels. They are the smallest ones, and they are made with MDF. And I'm gonna take two different size candlesticks and show you how to make them look old and chippy. First step is to take some DIY paint. Deb's Design Diary DIY paint is an all natural chalk based paint that comes in a wide variety of colors. I am using DIY weathered wood and DIY paint blue iris and you just randomly paint the candlesticks and corbels wherever you want but make sure to cover them entirely with paint. DIY paint will lighten as it dries, and that's when you know you're ready for the next step. For the next step, I am using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. The DIY paint is dry, and so now it's time to start layering paint. For this next step, I'm gonna be using Harbor from Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. It's a beautiful icy blue color. Sweet Pickens Milk Paint is a little bit different than most paints because it comes in a powdered form, so you have to mix it and you probably just wanna mix up pretty much what you're gonna use for your project. It is also all natural and food safe so you don't have to worry. I usually mix up about a quarter cup of milk paint with a quarter cup of water for my projects. If you need more, mix more. But if you have leftover paint, I would recommend using it because milk paint can spoil. So let's put in our powdered paint first. Now the key to mixing this well is to add hot water. So make sure it's nice and hot. We have a quarter cup of hot water. We'll put it in. Now I found the secret to making milk paint correct is using an immersion blender. And you want to put it in and blend until you get all of the chunks out. And this might take about a minute or so. Make sure to also get a lot of air in while you're mixing so that all of the chunks are out. When you're done, it's gonna kinda look like a melted milkshake. It should be a little bit drippy, but not super runny. Most important thing is just to get the milk paint on. Since I'm going to be wiping back a lot of the milk paint, I'm not looking for total coverage, but I want to get a nice layer on. I want these pieces to look old and chippy like old salvage. So here's a little tip. I'm going to use some of my DIY clear wax before I apply all of my milk paint. And I'm just gonna plop down randomly some wax. Don't think too much about it. This will give you some areas that will chip and crackle and do some really cool things. So if you haven't tried using clear wax before milk paint, try it. Another tip to help your paint crackle and chip 
is to help milk paint dry faster. Milk paint will dry very smooth unless you use a heat gun or a hair dryer on it to speed the process along. And that's when you'll get a little extra chipping and crackling in texture. I had a lot of drips with my milk paint and some of the drips caught in the grooves of the corbel. So you'll see I'm using my paintbrush as I go to make sure to pick up any of the drips. Now you let them completely dry. I was so pleased to see a little extra chipping and crackling as the milk paint dried. Since I had a little extra milk paint and I didn't want it to go to waste, it was perfect to start on my next project. I love vintage rolling pins that have painted handles. So for this next project, I taped off the end of my rolling pin and I applied the same color, which is Harbor Sweet Pickens Milk Paint to the ends. When you're finishing a rolling pin, you have to keep in mind that your product needs to be food safe and Sweet Pickens Hemp Oil is the perfect product to finish your rolling pin. All you're going to need to do is rub the hemp oil onto the wood, let it sit, and wipe it back. You can also use hemp oil to seal milk paint and chalk paint. So on the rolling pin with the painted handles, I'm using hemp oil to seal the entire piece. Allow the hemp oil to soak in for about 15 minutes and wipe with a clean cloth. JRV also makes a wide selection of different types of cutting boards. Some are offset and some are even shaped in animals. For this next project, I'm going to show you an easy way to finish the cutting boards. You could just use hemp oil, like I did on the rolling pin, but you can also make a stain. To make a stain that is also food safe, I'm going to be mixing hemp oil with a little Sweet Pickens milk paint to make a colored stain. The more milk paint you use, the deeper the stain will be. For this project, I am using In a Pickle milk paint. Next, I used a clean cloth to rub on the stain and sealer in one. The longer you let it set, the deeper the color will be. You can apply more coats if needed. The milk paint was dry on the corbels and candlesticks, and now it was time for one of my favorite steps, and that is to wet distress. For wet distressing, I love to use an old washcloth with lots of water on it, and then just rub the piece. As you wet distress, you will remove the top layer of paint and reveal the layers underneath. And you can control it by pushing hard or soft. If you take off too much, don't worry, you can just apply more paint. Once the candlesticks and corbels had dried from the wet distress, now it was time to seal them. To seal them, I am using DIY Clear Wax. For more information on using top coats and wax, you can click on the link above.
When you're done waxing the piece, take a look for extra areas that have built up wax and wipe them clean. It's a lot easier to do this before the wax has dried. For best results, let your wax dry for 24 hours before buffing. Buffing is an important step, do not skip it. You can use a clean cloth or a buffing brush. Use whatever works best for you. Hopefully you now have a whole bunch of ideas and a little inspiration about what you can do with JRV Wood products. All of the products that you saw here today are available for sale on my website at shoptheturnedleg.com and also in my booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall in Lincoln Park, Michigan. Let's take a look at how all the projects turned out. Thanks so much for watching. Now get out there to salvage, repurpose, and create.